we're talking about the ultimate BVI yacht charter itinerary. The islands that you've got to see, places that you've got to check out, beach bars, restaurants, family friendly. Let's jump in so you can start planning your next trip to the Virgin Islands. I've been coming down to BVI since 2011. I've been a full-time charter broker since then. I live in the Virgin Islands. So you are getting some expert advice on where to go, what to see, and how to plan your yacht charter. I get a lot of questions when you look at a map. People say, should I go around the islands clockwise, counterclockwise? We're gonna start it out by saying it does not matter. Wherever you start on Tortola, you can see these islands in any order. It's not that big of a distance. There isn't anywhere that you wouldn't be able to go. The only place that ever sometimes you have to skip is the island of Anagata, because Anagata is way farther out from the rest of the islands. So if it's really windy, if it's really wavy, you might wanna skip it and save yourself that four hour bumpy ride that's the only place that is weather dependent every other island you can see in any order but generally speaking there will be a logical order to the flow but you can start and end at any point so I'm on the island of Virgin Gorda right now. This is by far one of the most popular destinations and is totally a can't miss spot. I'm standing near the Baths, which is this giant rock formation and it has all these amazing caves that you can explore. You wade in ankle deep water up to maybe like chest deep water. If you want to, you don't have to get in the water as you walk through it, but it's kind of fun because the, the pools of water are bright blue, tropical, stunningly beautiful. It's a great family friendly destination there is some hiking and some ladders involved, hanging on some ropes as you walk through the caves. So it's not for everybody, but it is a stunningly beautiful destination to check out. I would try to time this based on when cruise ships are around. So this is a top tip. If you can avoid a cruise ship day, please do. It'll make your experience completely different. Otherwise, getting here kind of late in the day is a good way to do it because a lot of people are heading back to their cruise ships around three or four in the afternoon. The other places on Virgin Gorda not to miss are Leverick Bay, so a little bit further to the north. It's a great place. You can even dock for the night, so tie up your boat to a dock where you can walk off and walk on. There's some restaurants there to check out, and if you have kids, it's a great place. They have something called Our Show, which is a pirate show which runs several days a week. It's a really family-friendly event. Everyone blows the conch shells. You can get up on stage. You can be part of the experience, and that is called the Michael Beans Our Show on uh, Virgin Gorda. You can check out Facebook for um, the days it's running, the availability, but it's a really fun thing to check out. Just add a little bit of flair to your charter, especially great if you've got kids with you. Some other great spots to check out on Virgin Gorda are going to be North Sound. So we're talking about the Bitter End Yacht Club and Saba Rock. So the Bitter End Yacht Club, admittedly it got wiped out in 2017. It used to be this like legendary resort. They do have some of the hotel and accommodation up and running again, but it's not at full capacity. You really get to go there for day activities. They've got a huge boat turned into a bar, but not like an old boat. Like they built it beautifully just to be a bar. They've got water toy rentals. You can check out e-foils here. You can take lessons on how to use them. Sea scooters, everything is available for rent, especially if you're looking for some of the premium water toy experience. So that's the Bitter End Yacht Club in North Sound, Virgin Gorda. Right next to that is Saba Rock, an entire island that's just a restaurant. It is so cool. It's one of the chicest places to check out. You would anchor in a, on the mooring field and use your dinghy to get ashore, go there for dinner, drinks. They also have water sports rental. Both Bitter End and Saba Rock are great places to pick up some souvenirs. I point that out because some places there's just nothing to buy. So, you know, don't wait and think you're going to see a million spots. If you see something cool, get it while you can. The souvenirs can be few and far between. Anagata. Anagata is a really cool charter destination. So this one is a little bit further set off from the rest of the islands. It's going to be about a 20 mile sail out there, which might take you three or four hours. This is the only place that's weather dependent. It is really cool to check it out because it doesn't look like the rest of the islands. The rest of the islands, mountainous, giant, you know, formed from like volcanic activity over the years. Whereas Anagata is a reef island. So Anagata was formed by, you know, sand piling up on reef over the years and forming this really low-lying island. 
You can't see it until you're almost upon it. It's a really cool spot, so it doesn't look like the rest. Even when you anchor in there, it's really shallow. They have dredged the channel, so pretty much any boat can get in there. Some of the big yachts anchor around the main harbor. Anybody can do it. You're not gonna be restricted getting a big boat. Even monohull sailboats can get in there these days, but it is a shallow destination, so you need to be mindful of how you're navigating. It's known for lobster. All along the harbor, there's different lobster shacks. You're gonna place your order early in the day and then come back there for the evening, and it's like a real experience. It's this cultural Caribbean island experience at Anagata Lobster. They also have an Anagata Lobster Festival once a year. The other cool things you can do in Anagata, you can get a day boat out to Conch Island, so that people who fish the conch meat pile up all the shells in one location. So Conch Island at Anagata is a really cool spot to check out. When I was out there, I got to experience catching conch myself. So swimming down about 10 feet, catching a conch, bringing it up, captain of the dinghy and the day boat we were on actually like cut it up and made some ceviche right away. It was really cool. And I got to take a little swim in the channel between the conch shells and this bright blue water surrounded by these cool conch shells. It's really fun to check out. They also, when you go to the other island, you got Cowrec Beach or Lullaby Beach. They are stunningly beautiful. It kind of looks like you're in the Bahamas because it's so shallow and so bright blue and you can swim out there on the reef and snorkel and it is a great way to spend the afternoon. Another camp in this location is going to be Yoss Van Dyke. Everybody's got to check out the Soggy Dollar Beach Bar. It's listed as one of the best beach bars in the world, and it does not disappoint. Of all places that live up to the hype, Soggy Dollar Beach Bar is one of them. When I book a yacht charter, a lot of the time, I will just be like, I'm so excited. I'm checking the Soggy Dollar Beach Bar live cam every day to see what the weather looks like and can't wait until I'm one of those boats anchored out just off the beach swimming ashore so I get my dollars all soggy so I can go up there and try the painkiller cocktail they are famous for. Soggy Dollar is not an overnight anchorage. It's just somewhere you'd spend for the day. So you go around the harbor to Great Bay. That's where you're going to find Foxy's and a few other places, Corsairs and a few other restaurants. Lots of restaurants, lots of great nightlife. That place is pumping. It's the New Year's place to be. Anchorage gets full so fast and people just love it. These are some of the highlights of a British Virgin Islands yacht charter. Thank you.